get this show rolling. Welcome everyone to the Lincolnville Selectmen's meeting. It is June 24th. David, would you care to read the quote? The Certainly. This is the devilish thing about foreign affairs. They are foreign and will not, will not always conform to our whim. James Reston. Thank you very much. Uh, at this point, I would like to open the podium for any non-agenda items. Come on down. Hello, I'm Greta Galesian, 347 Suzanne Road. Thank you for the opportunity to speak at the Citizens Forum. Um, I am here as one of the volunteers of the Lincoln Ball Community Pickleball Group. I last spoke with you in February, introduced you a little bit to the game of pickleball and our intention to be able to teach it to people here in Lincolnville. It's um, a very easy game to learn. It is um, adaptable to different people's levels of fitness and all ages can play it. So with the Rec Commission, we have been holding introduction to pickleball and open play sessions most weeks on Saturday morning at the um, LCS school. And the school has graciously allowed us to, they've shared their multi-purpose nets with us and um, paddles so that people who don't have any equipment can come and learn the game. Um, I had approached the Rec Commission and then uh, spoke with you at one of the budget um, committee sessions, seeing if the town might be interested in considering getting some basic pickleball equipment so that we could have some available for outdoor season on the town courts. Um, and that was declined, but I did also speak about uh, court maintenance for the tennis courts. They were first installed in 2005 or six, and they've not had any maintenance since that time. General standard is between five and eight years to do maintenance on court um, surfaces. And I was pleased to see that there was a budget item to um, set aside some money for court maintenance in this coming year budget. And my understanding after talking with Mr. Kinney is that that will possibly be added to until we have enough so that the courts can be professionally resurfaced. So I think that's a really wise decision. It is infrastructure that we need to maintain the town. So I just want to give you a little update about the fun that we're having and the moderate exercise that we're having. Um, these sessions are open to the public and they are free of charge. Um, we do have a little pickle jar there with a suggested donation because we have to tape out the courts each week um, in the gym and the tape costs money. Um, so the group has just been subsidizing that at this point. Once we learned that we would not be able to get um, outside nets, and the, the multi-purpose nets from the school aren't um, uh, appropriate for outside use. We began to fundraise, and I am happy to report that we have enough money to buy two portable pickleball nets for outdoor use. Um, we had $359 in our account, and when we pressed the total this week to order the nets, it came to $358.30, so we call that Pickleball Perfect. So they are um, on their way. Um, so I just want to invite people to come. Uh, most Saturdays, we will be on the outdoor courts. There are two outdoor courts taped right now. Um, and once we get those nets, we can then have two courts uh, of Pickleball going. Our goal is to introduce pickleball to as many people as we can and to have Lincolnville be, known, Lincolnville be known as the place that beginners can learn pickleball and they can feel comfortable coming. So one court will always be de dedicated to beginners and people who don't have as much experience and the other court can just be open play for experienced um, pickleball players. We have had over 60 individual people, some of those who are experienced, but many of them who are new to it and um, averaging 10 people per session on a weekly basis. So it's really growing. I, my goal is to have families out there. We have had grandparents with grandchildren playing the game. We've had an eight-year-old and we've had a 78-year-old. So this is something that's accessible for lots of people. It's moderate exercise and uh, we're hoping that it will be accessible 
to all. So that's just my update. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak during the Citizens Forum for any non-agenda items? Seeing nothing, let's move <coughs> along to the Administrator's Report. I'll try to be quick since we have quite a crowd and quite an agenda <coughs> to I wanted to send out a special thanks to the ballot clerks and other volunteers that helped with elections uh, a couple weeks ago. That went smoothly from our end. Uh, and congratulations to all those people that earned themselves uh, new positions or returning positions in Dave's case. Um, and also thanks to the people that came out to town meeting for her success as far as that was concerned. Uh, this past Saturday, um, the folks from Wood Consulting were here uh, at the pier and the boat launching ramp. That's the consultants that the state of Maine hired to look at resiliency of our structures and nine other locations in Penobscot Bay for um, potential sea level rise. It was more of an information gathering from us versus giving us any answers. Uh, I was able to provide them uh, with the plans that we had for the pier from when it was built 30 years ago or nearly 30 years ago. Um, provided them with the information that we had electronically previously and they were going to do a little bit of survey work there as well. Uh, Selectman Gerritsen was able to attend. Um, they tapped my brain for what I knew um, and did their job and headed on at some point later. Uh, again, they're trying to, their goal is to get that done early fall or mid-fall, I guess, for their state report, and we'll have back at that point. Otherwise than that, I'll just leave it to the agenda. Any questions for David about that? Um, did they say anything about actually sharing any of those links or that presentation that they? Uh, the people there did not, but I'll put that in Todd's. That would here. be great. Thanks. Um, and unrelated to anything you just brought up uh, anything back from Camden on the uh, letter that we sent them? No. Okay. Um, all right, let's move along to upcoming meetings and announcements. Uh, all meetings are now are here at the town office unless announced otherwise. Lakes and Ponds is scheduled to meet Tuesday. June 25th, 7 p.m. The Finance Advisory Committee meets Wednesday, June 26th, 10 a.m. Planning Board meets Wednesday, June 26th, 7 p.m. Midco Solid Waste Corporation Board of Directors meets Wednesday, uh, June 26th, 5.30 at the Camden Town Office. That meeting starts with an executive session or two that I don't know how long they'll go, but um, so if you show up at 5.30, you're probably going to have to wait somewhere. Uh, town office will be closed for in observance of Independence Day on Thursday, July 4th, and selectmen meet next on Monday, July 8th, 6 p.m. Thank you very much. Are there any upcoming community events anyone cares to share? Good evening. I'm Donnie Heald, 926 Beach Road. I'm putting on a fireworks show for the town of Lincolnville this 4th of July and wanted to make the public aware of the preparations that we have in place. And so that's why I'm here tonight to announce that event to this board and to also share information on how we intend to handle the amount of people that are coming. Sure which we will get to perfect soon okay. Thank yeah you. what time does the shenanigans get started when should people we'll start we'll start busing from the school western auto and the parking lot at Baldrock gate at seven o'clock cool. in series we'll begin here and move down and we'll keep looping cool. and should we have the flow of people under control uh, the plan is to keep the five buses okay. at the beach so that once the show is over, we have five buses ready to load up and out okay. first thing. But uh, I'll explain that later. Yep. Great. Yeah. Thank Fantastic. You. Thank Thanks. you. 
any other upcoming community events? Okay. Seeing nothing, uh, we have four different sets of minutes to approve, so let's get started with May 28th, if we can, please. I move that the board approve the <coughs> May 28th, 2019 meeting minutes as presented. I'll second. Moved and seconded. Uh, discussion? Seeing nothing. All those in favor? Thank you very much. And we have June 10th meeting minutes. I move that the board approve the June 10th, 2019 meeting minutes as presented. I'll second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing nothing. All those in favor? Thank you. I move the board, board approve the June 12th, 2019 meeting minutes as presented. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing nothing. All those in favor? Thank you very much. And last set is from the 13th. I move that the board approve the June 13th, 2019 meeting minutes as presented. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing nothing. All those in favor? Thank you very much. And David, would you care to give a brief preamble for our next topic of discussion? Sure. Uh, in your packet, I was contacted by Elizabeth Laycock regarding uh, what we can all call, I guess, an invasion of brown tail moths, and wanted to have a chance to discuss the situation with the board. I think that's probably why we have a room full tonight. So, uh, does Elizabeth wish to come down to the podium and address the board? Great. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Laycock. I'm on. Um, 557 Youngtown Road, and I see a lot of my neighbors are here. Um, I think we probably are all aware of what a nuisance the brown tail moth, caterpillars, and soon to be moths, and larvae, and next year's caterpillars are um, in Lincolnville. Um, and all the driving that I've been doing around, we are such a hot spot. The state entomologist that I've been dealing with tells me that. Oh yeah, I've been right up near your road. That's about the same as all the mid coast. Well, maybe. I know it looks like a nuclear hol holocaust in our neighborhood. Um, there are no leaves. Um, so there are many areas that are worse. There are areas on 52 that used to have a nice green canopy and in the summer evenings you have your windows open and now you can't even have your windows open in your car when you drive through Lincolnville or Camden or Rockport because the hairs will get in your car, but there's no canopy anymore. It's so, and different people have different priorities. My priority is health. My husband and I have suffered tremendously from severe rash to the point where we had to be on maximum strength oral and topical steroids, which we're coming off of now and feeling much better because we haven't been outside. <laughs> And we need to work our wood, so we have wood to burn this winter. So there's a lot to it. I mean, there's a, we could discuss this all night probably, but there's something that there is, there is, there are many different fundings available, but our concern right now is mitigation and remediation. Um, and the state has funding available. There's other grant funding available, but nothing happens unless this, the town files a public nuisance petition with the state DHHS, with the cooperation and active involvement of Maine CDC and uh, the Department of Agriculture, Conservation, and Forestry. It, I don't know how hard of a process it is. It sounds like more coordination than anything with um, with the other departments to get it done. And I don't know, there, there is a wealth of information out on the internet about what kinds of mitigation and what kinds of remediation can be considered. Um, it seems to me that the best source of information is Cornell University. They've been studying this for a long time. And the entomologists in Maine are working with Cornell University. Um, it, it's hard.
hard to get a pat answer. Well, you just have to remove the nest at the top of the trees. Oh, sure, I can climb 100 feet into my oak tree. You know, you don't want to be sarcastic, but yeah, that's a great <coughs> idea, but that's not going to help the state park, which is half defoliated. So I know that, that we have other information available to you, and I don't want to take a lot of your time, but I just wanted to open up the subject. Um, there are plenty of people suffering, not just their property, but also their persons. Um, people can't send their kids out to play. It's, it, I don't know if any of you saw the article in the Bangor Daily News, but one of the um, local um, arborists put it well when he said, we're bordering on a state of emergency here because my husband and I babysit little kids. Well, we can't send them outside. We cannot. And, with any sense of responsibility, send those kids outside to play because it's not safe. It's not safe. We go out for an hour to work wood and we come in and have to shed the clothes down cellar before we even enter the house and take a shower and use packing tape all over where we've been exposed and we still get the rash every single day. So it's bad and it's real bad for children, I think, because it's just harder for them. So anyway, um, Arlene Leighton, my next door neighbor across the road, um, has some pictures to share that I think <coughs> Josh is gonna help her with. Um, and you guys have a lot of, you have a plethora of information I know that, that we provided you. Um, but we'd like to plead with you to consider doing that, to consider that process. And if it's painful in any way, I'm happy to help in any way that I can. If you want me to drive something somewhere or anything, I'd be glad to do that or contact anybody or, you know. Um, you have a presentation based on the... It's not my presentation. Right, but you're facilitating. Yes, fantastic. Well, uh, why don't we go through that? Is there a narr... Do you wish to narrate or just run the Could through? you do that? Would it be all right if Arlene did that? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. We just want to make sure to speak clearly into the microphone so that the folks at home um, can listen also. Okay, maybe we can shut the lights just a little There's a seat right up front here if you'd like. Hi, my name is Arlene Jerwitz Layton and I am this person's across the street neighbor. So I've kind of had a front seat to what's happening to her, to her beautiful oaks and other things. This is a view of my driveway if I look up, just to let you know that this is what I see when I leave in the morning. Next slide. This is um, a brown, uh, brown tail moth caterpillar. One of my neighbors said, it's a mouth on one end, an anus on the other, and a digestive system between them. It's an eating machine. You can have tiny oak leaves on your tree and then it's seemingly overnight, oh, yeah. overnight they're gone. Yeah. If you notice, you'll see these little hairs. These little hairs are point, um, 15 millimeters long, microscopic. Um, and they, in their third molt, not, not when, originally when they first come out, in their third molt, they will start, their cast-offs will start to go into the air. So third, fourth, fifth molt, you get, you're re being replenished with these hairs. Next slide. This is a view of, um, this is my, my neighbor's house. And this is some of the trees that have been completely defoliated. Next slide. This is just behind. Do you want to? This say? is just up the road. Our next door neighbors on that side. Um, and we notice the nests on their trees and on one of the Layton's trees last winter. And we knew it was going to be bad. We hadn't really noticed too many nests on our trees. But you can see the nests on our tree on the upper left, those weren't there in the winter. So they're still building nests. At, not, a, not 
trimming them a little bit, but the state, entomo the, yeah, the state entomologist says that a tree can be defoliated by an insect twice, only twice. So next year, and this is the top entomologist, and I can't remember how to pronounce her last name, it's Eleanor Gundin or Groydon. Um, it can take two defoliations. It will refoliate perhaps this year. It's getting late in the year, but maybe. Um, but it can only be assaulted twice. I've heard from another neighbor that, oh, it can take it four times. I tend to believe our own state experts um, than someone I don't know. This was a person from out of state. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but it's just, <laughs> she's the state expert. So that's what she said, we can take it twice. And if with all of those caterpillars, we've got, and if you drive up by the lake, as you drive up by the lake and you see that one from the lake up to say the corner at Youngtown, the trees on the left are defoliated. If you look closely, you only have to reduce your speed by five miles per hour. Per hour. If you look closely at all of the trees, all of the trees down below, all of them have cocoons in them. And the way to recognize a cocoon is a dark leaf. A dark leaf means two leaves are together and the light's no longer passing through it. And if you were to open that, there would be one to 10 caterpillars cocooning inside that leaf clump. It's not a one leaf leaves together but they're all up along the lake so our trees are going to get hit again I mean they've dropped <coughs> they've risen and they've eaten and cocooned and so any tree that is going to refoliate chances are is going to be eaten again so that's what that's sorry a lot of words there okay this is what a human nu nuisance it's called the risk risk to toxic um, hairs on caterpillars um, on the caterpillars and also on the cocoons. So, um, you know, we have a living specimen here of what it looks like, and, I, um, and it's, uh, it's, it's a it's an awful, awful thing. Go ahead, next one. This is, my, this is what the hair looks like under a microscope. It's a hypodermic oh. needle that injects toxin into the skin and lungs. It carries in the air, settles in grass, leaves, brush, in yards, on porches, under boats. It can become airborne again. The toxins last for one to three years in the environment. It does get less every year, but it is still toxic at the end of three years. Okay. So um, this, we have a wonderful delivery system for toxins. Um, next slide. Um, I have, this is another thing I've been talking to, to, uh, to Lynn, Liz about, um, well, what's the truth? When do we have to worry? <laughs> How long do we have to worry? And I've seen things from the state saying, oh, when there are caterpillars and then it lessens. Well, if you can see their life cycle, there's hairs, these toxic hairs, are coming at different times. They're coming now with, in August, um, when they lay their eggs, um, there's a little bit, you'll see the hairs, are uh, their largest amount of hairs on leaves and brush. And that is from what happens in later in August when the, uh, uh, when the cocoons start to, to burst. So then you'll see in September and June, the nesting of October and, and, and April. So um, that's when they're, so you kind of see the largest amount of hair is April to July. So we really are in a, a heavy period of time. But um, the other thing I've been cautioning to people is when these things go into their cocoons, and it's not only the host trees, and I heard something about the host trees have mostly females. I don't know about, you know, I have, I'm, that's an interesting point, but anyway, uh, the cocoons can be found anywhere. They don't necessarily go to their host trees. They can be under the eaves of houses, in other vegetation. Um, one of the things they talked about um, was make sure you check your cars, if your car is parked someplace, or a baby carriage, 
make sure you're not carrying a heavy infestation into a non place that doesn't have infestation. They're feeling that places that all of a sudden they have these things that it might be transplant, uh, transplanted, uh, transported by uh, uh, by uh, vehicles. <coughs> so, okay, next slide. All right, um, these are links, and what I'll do is I'll post them to the bulletin board rather than going through them. Uh, the information on uh, Coastal Pharmacy has a lot of good information about things you uh, you can do um, for, you know, to uh, things like what's going to happen in the summer when you want to open your windows <laughs> and you have these hairs around. It's hot. What do you do? Even if you have an air conditioner, you should probably should have a HEPA filter on your air conditioner because the hairs are microscopic. Um, what do you, uh, a uh, window fan, you should probably blow it out rather than in. I mean, these are, and there's also, oh, there's also fans that have HEPA filters, I've been looking, okay. So the other one, uh, the Yarmouth presentation, and somebody posted this, actually somebody from Yarmouth uh, talked of it. I think I, I sent everybody, I sent all the board this link. That's a really good presentation on pesticide options and impact and, 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 th and ways to look at it. The University of Maine um, is also doing brown, brown tail research and, and in conjunction with uh, Cornell University. Mm -hmm. I contacted them because they, you could only send a check to them by mail. And I said, don't you have a way to do it online? So he said, oh, that's a great idea. <laughs> so anyway, um, I asked them, they have an online crowd, crowdsource funding, and that page may be coming soon. And I think that will really help it because there's very limited research um, on this topic right now because it's not, you know, it's not something we've been dealing with and we only deal with it right now in Maine. So there's a Facebook uh, page devoted to it as well. And I just want to say, you know, we're dealing with, as she said, we're dealing with right now a hot spot. But let's look at some of the other areas where it's, where, where, where we're finding it. You can do the next slide. When we were talking about the Gundacook, um, uh, uh, watershed. This is now. This is now. This is wow. after the leaves supposedly have come out on the trees. Mm -hmm. well, this is now. Uh, it is estimated that half the oak in the Magundacook Lake watershed are defoliated. Okay, so this is this is you know so the people who were living um, in the watershed right now. Roads around it look like desolate, um, and so that's <coughs> something to be aware of. That this is this is. I'm wondering. Um, sometimes I watch people who are climbing up the hills in a breezy day, <laughs> and I just wonder not why nothing's posted. It, but maybe it's one of those things, you know, where uh, that that we're going to have to, somebody's going to have to come back with all these things on them and then it's going to become an issue. But at this point, you know, that's what we're seeing. Next slide. Okay, this is at, um, this is Youngtown uh, Cemetery. And this is an oak and I talked to uh, somebody uh, who, uh, ground keeps the cemetery said he doesn't want to, he said it's very problematic to do that now because there are caterpillars all over the cemetery. And there was also some talk of how we can save this beautiful old oak and what can we do to save the oak. Next slide. All right, these are uh, trees that are across the town. This is on 173. Um, this tree is um, uh, uh, Luann Wright's property. This is, so I'm just saying, not only do we have the watershed, but here we have across the area. And then this other tree, and you can see just a little bit of defoliation on the top. That's uh, Slab City Road and, um, 
and uh, uh, Route 173. So we're having, and one of the things, unfortunately, my husband and I now, we take drives around Lincolnville saying, there's some, there's some, there's some. I know there's some downtown. The two trees at the church, one is half defoliated, one is defoliated. So we're in the middle of um, the beginning stages of a, a pretty seri serious infestation. And consequently, uh, if you live in it, um, I've had uh, rash and I've had breathing problems. Um, I've learned not to go out on windy days. My days to prefer to go out, and actually it's been advised, are rainy, uh, wet days, because it keeps the hairs down. It's also when the black flies um, and the mosquitoes are out. <laughs> so there's no, you know, there's no happy median. So that's how I'll end it. I don't know if anyone else wants to say anything, but I, I think we're, I'm done. Do okay, I do have one other thing okay. I want to follow up on. I had said to you in, in my email to David, that I, my husband and I spent the better part of the day going around gathering materials, a complete from scratch DIY brown tail moth trap. But I didn't know, I was getting lots of different information about what was the best light bulb to use. And I, I almost badgered this entomologist at the state, poor guy, finally he answered me and he said, the reason you can't find any information on brown tail moth traps to kill them is because it's ineffective. The, um, both genders of the moth are drawn to the light, but only the males hit the light and will fall into your trap. The females will go to a close surface and just rest there within sight of the light, but the, and the, they're already fertilized, so it's useless. And then he said, you'll also kill other species that you don't want to kill. So, so the traps that we had so much hope and we were going to ask you to ask every citizen to put one in their yard apparently is useless and it was not a good idea. So now Thank we you, don't. Josh. So um, that's all I had for you, I think. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thoughts, gentlemen? Um, well, I think we should refer this to the Conservation Commission or an ad hoc committee. Um, yeah, I mean, it goes without saying that this is something, <laughs> it's so, it feels really frustrating because I feel like, you know, we need to do something. And the challenge, whether you know it or not, is the board, the town, is limited to when we gather here. So I think that the most rapid means of addressing this issue is to um, create and draft a charge for the Conservation Commission um, to include but not be limited to um, drafting communications for our approval and exploring and exhausting any and all uh, avenues that we may have as a municipality for doing our part to address it within our town and also you know whether we can help and assist on you know in a statewide converse yeah conversation um, so do you need a motion David would that be helpful or shall we just start the conversation there? Yeah, I think draft I mean, the charge and then. Yeah, if there's anything in particular you'd like um, included within it, I, mean, I, I think we can get the just pretty quickly. Well, I mean, um, it seems to me that. Um, Addressing the avenues that we have, I mean, there's very specific guidelines that um, the Department of Health wants from a municipality in terms of communications. So I would say um, charging them to ad address those items. 
and bringing that to the board and looking into grant opportunities yeah. and opportunities to communicate to the legislation because I also understand that there are various stages of drafts and unfunded studies so various communications from the town so beyond the beyond board communication with the folks in Augusta we're looking at education for the public in terms of how to avoid how to mitigate and then what strategies might be available on a town-wide yep. effort and a region-wide effort yep. is that yep safe is there anything we can do that. to add we we definitely hear you all yeah um and we want to know all the options that are available to us deal with this and my understanding is for right now any any um, action would have to wait until the fall until they're in they're back in their their nest anyways unfortunately this is the time when we have to hunker down um, but it you know I I mean it's sort of like with any and all municipal activities you know I always joke that with all do municipal speed, which is part of the reason why we rely on our committees so heavily is because they have the freedom and ability to go and research and do things and aren't, you know, they, they can be our, our legs and our, our minds when we're not here in this format. So a, a faster way for us to collect as much information and options to then bring back here and, take official action on it, but um, I think that that is the swiftest way for us to gather any and all options that we have to consider and then... This is great. This is very informative. Yeah. Disappointing to see that there's really not a remedy and uh, something we can do quickly, but I think with this type of information, the Conservation Commission can definitely further than this. There's items right in here um, that tell you what to do. And like you said, they have the ability to spend more time on it. Yep. Uh, you know, to get it moving. Yep. Which is good. And, with, and also with any luck, you know, we can get a conversation started regionally, you know, yeah. that perhaps we can all light fires to get things. Sure, come on down. I just want to say in my own research in Cornell and, and, and with the university that there are they are looking at new ways to try to do it and we may want to try to be a research pilot for some of these that might be something and I'd be certain cer I've been researching this for several months so I'd be happy to help share anything that I have come up with thank okay, you thank you thank you Yep, I know. Hi, I'm Christy Hardy Gilson. I live at 236 Camden Road. Um, and maybe in your recommendations to the Conservation Committee, you might want to also put something in there around things that people should not do. Um, I'm kind of thinking about that scene in Jaws when the shark is out there and all the people are going after it in any way, shape, or form. And, I just keep thinking about <clears throat> pesticides around the lake. Um, I've talked to a couple of the Camden Select Board members and people in their community talked about drones that the Chinese are using to um, <laughs> flame throw uh, <laughs> trash off the power lines. And I've read about people using shotguns to shoot these nests oh in the winter. Oh and wow. I know, <laughs> so before you know, the town goes crazy with home remedies, um, <coughs> It, it might be wise for the commission to, or the conservation committee to just say, here are some not acceptable practices versus directions we'd like to go in. And maybe maybe some of those would be just perfect directions to go in, but. Sure, a lot of, home, and Elizabeth, one of those home remedies, she mentioned the, the lighting trap is, is a contraption my husband is working on as we speak. So yeah. um, so as we learn, uh, you know, there are probably certainly things we should not be doing 
as well. So thank thanks. you. You bring up a very great point, and we should all encourage each other that despite the um, feeling of panic that I think some people are feeling to not. Uh, what is it? Uh, what do they call it? Frontier justice. <laughs> um, okay. Lead the charge. Ah, uh, sure. It's a new point. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um. Uh, my name is Leslie Devoe with the Rec Commission. I did notice that there was a tree that's defoliated at Breezemere Park. And so I did have visions also what happens if others do and what that means for the brand mm -hmm. uh, in our town and also eventually for property values around. But I, I wondered if, is it okay if we ask as the Rec Commission for some money to have an arborist look at that tree this fall? That doesn't mean you say yes or no. Can, is that how, is the process? Uh, I think we would need to have a conversation about what implications that would have on your budget. Right. Okay. Yeah. So there's no emergency fund money if we don't have any money to cover it. I mean, not in the recreation committee. But somewhere else potentially. Not saying no, but that's a conversation for another time. I would say you should meet with David, have a conversation, and then we can have a conversation as a board. Okay. Sounds yeah. Good. Yeah. It's something to go on a future agenda. Yeah. Yep. New points? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, my name is Jeff Layton. I uh, live on Youngtown Road. Uh, Sorry, can I? I can't listen to the person at the podium if there's other conversations going on. Thank you. Sorry. Sure. Thanks. Um, I want to uh, say that in the long term, you ought to be talking to other towns as well. This goes uh, to Waldo County, Knox County, Lincoln County, yep. as far down as Yarmouth, which had a large problem with this last year and uh, is able to give advice on terms of what to do the second year. Um, the Camden board has taken this up some and talked about uh, what uh, the town can do for public places, but uh, not for private places and where the line between those is in terms of uh, trying to get homeowners to use uh, their common sense or some sense in pesticide use and other such things mm -hmm. and there's uh, uh, we don't know quite what the future of this insect is it goes in various cycles but um, it has the possibility of expanding throughout the mid coast area which would have a lot of consequences on the health and uh, economy of the area so it's not something to take lightly. Um, in the short term, I'm wondering if uh, there's a health person who can look at the conditions that are enjoyed by people outside uh, at the public places, whether it be in Lincolnville at Breesmere Park or going up the Bald Rock Trail or at uh, Barrett's Cove. For instance, when the lake is um, has what is it, the equivalent of red tide, uh, mm. there's a warning put up at Barrett's Cove saying that this water is not uh, recommended to swim in. And I'm wondering if we can't have an air monitor who is able to say a similar thing on, in terms of the moth infestation, that certain trails where there, these moths are obvious can be seen, maybe, maybe should be posted for the benefit of uh, tourists or people who are uh, particularly allergic to this. And I'm wondering if the town can in, think about this in a short-term medical sense as well as mm. a longer-term um, taking care of the trees sense. Mm. Thank you. David, I'm not aware of any such mechanism. Is there something that you have rattling around in that vast archive of yours? Uh, that would be a new one, but um, certainly I think there's... Uh, a fair amount of information being distributed now, including tonight's meeting online and over TV and on the Lincolnville Bulletin Board, and we certainly post some general information up on our town's website as well. Um, I, I don't know how, I don't even know if there's a test available to us that would say, you know, today is a bad day because it's hot, it's windy, it's dry, it's wet, it's but yeah. certainly, I think it's certainly within the purview of, you know, 
fortunately or unfortunately, we're not the first community that's been down this road. And there's so much information out there and somebody needs to gather it, cull it down to the essentials and then start that education process. I don't know, but yep. <coughs> yep. certainly um, I mean, people have to be, take precautions for, you know, ticks and black flies and mosquitoes and it's different and everybody reacts differently, but it's, it's, it's a tricky yeah. one, that's for sure, that's for sure. Last one. <laughs> I hope you all are going to stay for the remainder of the Andy agenda. Young, <laughs> Andy Young, up down road. Um, one of the things the lady that with the rec committee brought up, um, the Youngtown Cemetery Committee yet met yesterday at the cemetery. We investigated the oak picture of the oak that was on there. That's completely defoliated. is somewhere between 150 and 200 years old. Um, if we don't take care of it, it's going to be an additional cost to take care of it because otherwise it's going to wipe out a lot of gravestones. So for things that are on public property, we're either going to look at finding funding now or we're going to be looking at finding funding three or four years from now to take out trees that are going to hurt somebody or damage property. So just a point just for the selectmen to begin thinking about and the town to be thinking about would just be, you know, $2 spent today may save $100 spent five years from now. Um, uh, the Youngtown Cemetery Committee, we're looking at the possibility of some kind of plugs that can be put into the trees in either the fall or the spring that apparently make the leaves taste bitter. Um, and the brown tailed moths don't like them. I don't know if this is internet fantasy. It was brought up at the meeting last night. I have not looked at it myself. Um, but again, it, it may be worth some you know, short term expenses on something to try to prevent, you know. Three or four thousand dollars to take out an oak tree that you know might wipe out a town building or cemetery. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, very much. Thank you. Uh, next, we have Mr. Somewhere. Ready to go. I know. I know he's around here somewhere. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay. Final shirt, I guess. Yeah. Is Donnie in the building? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can turn it down if you want, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, she found it. While we're waiting for Mr. Heal, uh, do you want to give a preamble to the sure. other half of the conversation? Sure. David's just going to give a, oh. a little preamble oh, of, Donnie's of, of, of part hear. of it. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Forgive me, I was collating. Excellent. <laughs> yes, welcome. Thank you. No, Donnie Heald, once again, 926 Beach Road. Also promoter and creator of Lincolnville Fourth of July Beach Blast, which we are happy to bring to the town of Lincolnville again this year, making it our second annual, hopefully. Lincolnville Beach Blast. And so tonight we're here to talk to the town about our plans and to get the board's permission, if need be, to use a portion of the parking lot for what we perceive as a uh, proper placement of the band for the evening's entertainment. We have several options available to us, but we feel that we would like to talk to the board about it and get their feedback and know that uh, we have a plan in place. Uh, the fire chief and I spent time at the site looking at what, our, what the needs would be for the five charter buses to move through, this, through the area. And basically what our plan consists of is five buses, three on two, counter-rotating the beach from Lincolnville
middle school to Western Auto to the gate at Bald Rock parking and then to the beach. They will split off. Two of them will come from Duck Trap Road direction while three of them will go 173 to Route 1 and then take a left. And the reason for that is for, for the use and ease of disembarking the riders onto the sidewalk which is why we have firemen there to keep those spots occupied so that they won't be parked in and to handle the flow of traffic because we have deputies handling the flow of Route 1 itself on both ends. However, um, to get in and out of that traffic takes extra people in order to get the bus back into that flow because it's going to be greatly reduced in speed. So that's what the fireman's role there is, is to not only keep the parking spot available but to also provide cover for the bus and stop the flow and let them out so that they can move back into the flow and continue moving throughout the evening. And what we had proposed when we met was that Don would bring a truck from the beach department across the street and park it across the southernmost entrance to the parking lot at 7 o'clock, probably a little prior to that. The parking gets parked up pretty, pretty heavy in the evening. And so what we were trying to do was prevent drive-through. Um, the northern entrance will remain open so that people can come in and park in the available public parking that is there. And in the Lobster Pounds reserve spaces that aren't occupied will be available to park in as well. What we didn't uh, want and what the fire chief didn't want was for the people to just pull off Route 1 and go through the site and use it to queue and turn around uh, because of just so many people walking around. So we wanted to not block off the use of the parking lot, but we wanted to restructure how it's accessed for public safety. Um, with regard to the band and the pictures in front of you, uh, you'll see views of the school from Google Earth. You'll see Western Auto. Um, these guides visually were just to give you a sense of scale as to what we have. We have men tasked with parking cars at Western Auto because the back lawn facility at Western Auto, which is where Susan and Danny want us to park their, the cars, there's room for probably close to 300 cars out there. And so we don't think that it should be a free access situation. So we want to have at least two people at that facility running that. Now, right now it's looking like it's going to be Hope volunteer firemen. Um, and it may be a couple of men from the town as well, but we have all four Lincolnville firemen which are helping with the traffic at the beach, located at the beach. The plan is that once that parking is established, uh, we want to bring those men down from that parking just prior to 9 o'clock to the beach to assist once the show is over. Uh, we want to try to prevent congestion uh, at the ferry parking because uh, a great number of cars parked in there last year and we want to try to make it easier for people to get out. If somebody's there managing the flow of traffic through that area, it'll make it much more um, expedient for the public to get out um, and hopefully uh, result in a, in, a, in a more fluid flow to get up to Route 1 where the deputy is so that he can handle the flow from there. So that's why I'm here tonight. Um, I've spoken with David, I've spoken with uh, the ladies in the office um, about additional uh, need for riders through the Tulip Rider to cover the town uh, and to hold them harmless in case someone was to fall down and get hurt or, or something else may have, may have occurred um, of an injurious nature, uh, that the town would be held uh, harmless from that event happening. Um, things happen in today's society. You have to kind of try to think of everything you can. So we didn't want to create something that was going to uh, create a liability issue for the town. And uh, so it's my understanding that uh, regardless of, of how we proceed tonight, uh, we're, we're still going to have to do that. So uh, what I need is your input from the board tonight on whether or not you have any other concerns as far as uh, how we intend to handle the flow of the public, how we intend to uh, create a safe space for the band to set up, and how we intend to bring in and transport out people. Jesus is quite an undertaking. <coughs> You've done a lot. Um, I, 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 and I must qualify that by saying I'm sorry that we're here in the 11th hour. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, I do have a concern um, with the 
small fire department that we have and I know that Hope has. Yes. At high traffic hours we've got four of our the chief is good with giving up four people and if there's an emergency he's not going to three work. three men and himself makes four. So the chief is going to be the chief will be on scene. Hmm. But he but he's going to be parking and directing cars and He's going to be aiding with the traffic flow of yeah. the buses in and you, out of you, the You understand where I'm going with this. Sure. What if there's a catastrophic event on the other side of town? Sure. Then we've got four firemen that are probably going to be told, leave your post, we've got an emergency. Mm -hmm. Who takes over that, for that? That's a, that's a dawn question. Um, I'm sorry, I don't have that quite, that answer for you. Okay. Um, but he, he is the one that, that would decide as chief of, of fire. You, you see what I'm saying? I just no. You know, I, that's a relevant question. That but, but I, a, I can't answer his question. Yeah. Okay. So we're probably going to need to know that. Sure. Um, I don't know what his uh, correspondence with David has been. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know that he has communicated to him. I don't know what it was. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, I could presume maybe he's thinking while they're at the beach, there's a truck they could, you know, like maybe. Maybe they're thinking. Yeah, thinking and and I'm thinking, thinking that that's what he's probably gonna gonna say and do. God forbid if something like that happens. But that puts you guys in a serious bind and a good chance for chaos if there's that many people. I, right. I can I can understand why you would think that, but in all reality, um, the loose buses we have coming are pretty used to dealing with not having any curbside service because I've worked with them for the Rock and Lobster Festival, and we've handled over fifty thousand people in a week two shifts of five buses, nobody holds the curb for us. We go in, we disembark when we can, we let people off, we let people on. Okay. And uh, we do that We do that without incident, and uh, you know, I um, can speak confidently to that, having been involved with it in multiple seasons, and uh, great success we have doing it, and that's why I hired them. Okay. The chief did correspond to me that he thought that the plan as it now existed would be sufficient for both here and for other but you never know I know yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so the only Sorry. other question that I had is traffic through traffic uh, for Lincolnville Beach that's not going to be interrupted or is no no interruption yeah, okay no the idea is to slow them last year yeah Kern what what we did with one deputy um, is he sat on the sidewalk right next to the intersection of 173 and the ferry road. Yep. And so when you came down over the hill from Dots, first thing in your view is a lit up squad car with its lights on. So, so to get people's attention and to bring the traffic flow down. Um, so, so that's the, um, and of course we can't stop Route 1. There's no, no, no way. No, and that's, yeah. what I, that's what I wanted if you're gonna try to stop it. And no. the, the, next, the no. second part of that is what's local law enforcement's role in your event? Local law enforcement consists of uh, two deputies with cars yep. from Waldo County, and they will be handling the Route 1 corridor. Um, and that's, I would have had three if they had insisted on it, but they, the sheriff said two. So I- well, As long as they're comfortable with it, then. That, that's, that was their comfort level, but I wanted to add extra layers to help because um, logistically to move around lots of people and especially to help them egress a site, um, more people of official capacity that are used to dealing with crowds, the better. And you know, I know four firemen doesn't sound like a lot, but uh, I think our plan is a solid one. Uh, when we bring down the additional help from the other parking area to help with them, I think they can help egress the parking at the ferry and get those people out in a safe and solid way that uh, is uh, time efficient. We want to try to make it so that um, it's an enjoyable experience all the way around. We don't want people, um, you know, languishing in cars that can't get out, and we don't want to create car uh, any traffic congestion and accidents. There is going to be um, obviously a little bit of an exodus of, of cars at slower speeds because it's just a lot of congestion with everybody leaving. But uh, we're confident that with the band and additional evening entertainment, we're going to split the group. We're going to keep at least a third will stay behind. Do you have a, an overall projected number of people? I, I don't, but I'm thinking that it'll probably be at least, at least, I don't know, it's going to be in the thousands. I mean, it, it's got to be. I mean, it was a couple thousand last year. I, I mean, I didn't count them all, yeah. but I, you know, I took people's word at, for it. 
that you know they thought it was a couple thousand people and I, I said okay well if a couple thousand people bring someone then you know you could you could see it grow yeah. you know I mean but we really don't have any way to know we just we just want to make sure that we're not causing bottlenecks jams and insurmountable uh, flow issues yeah. um, so yeah. so that's that's my concern uh, is to make sure that everybody can come together in a meaningful and safe way we know that it's going to be uh, good turnout and uh, we just want to make sure that we have a contingency for the for the amount of people that we have and that um, uh, we won't we won't see any deleterious effect from the people being there that they'll be able to enjoy themselves and uh, move about freely and and uh, enjoy enjoy the beach does the band have insurance and if not are they prepared to purchase uh, I, I as as the sponsor I'll be purchasing for for the event I hire them so they, they don't have insurance. That's an, that's an official. No, they do not. And so I will be I will be purchasing the rider. Okay. Um, you know, it's 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 an ounce of prevention. It's an ounce of prevention for the for the cost of it. It's it's well worth it. Um, and it, it's ju it's just important to make sure that we take that into account and, and do it. Okay. Um, but the band will not pay for that. I will. So, Donnie, are you, you're just looking for our official okay yes, on yes. location. Yes. Now, has the conversation changed at all from the last time we chatted, or you're still your primary optimal location is along the center line of the beach? We wanted to area. be. We wanted to be just to the right of the cannon if we could, because there's a natural gap there where we can just move a trash can away, and there's a curb, but the drum set will sit behind it. It'll mean that two spaces need to be used, because I need a 16 by 12 T-shape for the, for the band to operate in. Yep. And then they'll be on the sidewalk portion as well. There's a small sidewalk portion in front of those parking spaces. So, so that block area <coughs> is, what is, is what I'm looking to set aside. Now we had talked about creating cones or a safety area mm -hmm. around the band. Is that still yeah. the plan? Yeah, I was I was planning on putting hay bales around them and putting cones on them. Okay. Just so it's an obvious, because cones get picked up, but people aren't so happy to lug hay around. <laughs> it's too much like work. <laughs> and and uh, you know and and we are bringing down hay anyways um, uh, for for the restaurant to have and for the beach in placement. Um, and we will have a bonfire after the fireworks to go with the band. Uh, they're separated by pretty good distance. The bonfire is smaller and scaled back because it is in December and because we have a limited time. And uh, I will be responsible for putting out the fire in totality. Um, I'm not having the fire department do it because it makes work for them. They've got to wash equipment. And the second you drag a hose, it gets dirty. They have to wash it. They have to go refill the truck with water. They, you know, I'm just, I don't want to make work for them. Um, I got a great big ocean right there, so I'm just going to run a bucket brigade with a couple friends, and we're going to put it out, and we're going to remove the remains of it in the morning, the following morning, in its to in, in, in totality. There'll be no evidence of it there, and there'll be no pallets burned. Uh, this will be just trees of a smaller size, small enough so that we can get them get a good burn in a couple in about a two-hour period. Um, well, let's. As a board, let's uh, address the band location. Qu questions for Donnie or for? Well, in regards to the band and its location, yep. how is the relationship with you and the budding property owners? The Lobster Pound, the, the McLaughlin's uh, yep. check there. Yes. That's, that's exactly why I'm here. Um, Originally, we had planned on putting the band there, but because we wanted to play earlier than nine, Rick and felt that that was really too much pressure on him with his roped-in um, boat bar, and he thought that that was that was too close. So we agreed to move it, and that's the reason that I'm here is because we wanted to create a more harmonious use, and we wanted to not pressure any of the neighbors um, and make something useful uh, happen of this move, we asked you so that we could center locate it and um, take the pressure off Rick so that so that he can better manage his 
the sale of alcohol area, which will be open till nine o'clock. And then he's gonna close his. So instead of being up here, you're you're right in here then, right? This this where you're gonna be? We're gonna be see where the cannon is? Oh, uh, over here. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna, gonna be over cannon, here and over the here. fire will be over here where that ball spot is. Okay. So we're looking to put the band here. There's an outlet on the wall of the restaurant, the double ground faulted outlet to feed them. They only need two cords. So we wanted to keep it close enough that we could run short cords and not run into it. Not run into a situation where we were popping breakers unnecessarily. And the the sentiment of the lobster pound. I Do you wish do you wish to call yeah, the I'd representative like to up hear, to the podium? I'd like to hear your thoughts. <laughs> Riley Rockliffe for representing the Lobster Pound. Um, I'm very excited for this event. Um, I would do live music at the Lobster Pound all the time if I could, um, and I think it's a really great opportunity to have a great community beach dance party get together. And um, Donnie and I have been in talks since last year about how to make this the most full event that we can in the safest way possible, and I really do approve of the plans that he's drawn up for a control of traffic band placement, timing of events, um, and such. Great. Thank you. Okay. I mean, I would say f from my perspective, um, contingent on the signing of uh, this insurance for the band, um, I don't have a problem with it. Last question. Um, yes, sir. The, the parking spots in the public lot, what was what was the decision on that? Well, we, they were parked up last year, and people tend to get in there to use the restaurants. Okay. They get in there, and they stay for the duration of the event. So they're, they're, it, it wasn't the issue. And the issue that, from my angle and from my informed feedback from the fire chief, was that it, the fire truck keeps people from just pulling in there and using it to go out the other end, turn around and go down Route 1 the other direction. We don't want that. If you're coming in there and you're looking for a spot to park, well, that's fine. Um, that's how it happens every day down there. When you go down like yesterday when it's super hot and sunny and everybody's at the beach, everybody's standing out there. There's just a, all kinds of people and, you know, and it's, and it's okay. But we thought for the purpose of an event with even more people that we needed to only have in and out through one egress point so that people weren't just using it as a turnaround. So they're going to come in, they're going to park, they're going to be there early because they want to eat and have drinks and then wait for the show. And so we'll leave those spots occupied. But they'll have access to leave if they need to. Okay. Um, what we just didn't want is through flow traffic. Mm -hmm. um, we needed to create a safe space as we could. And that's the one reasonable alternative to taking over the space and not allowing any traffic or any parking of any kind, um, which we thought would be unreasonable and would create a bad effect for the local businesses because it would hinder easy egress uh, to those businesses from close parking and it's the town spaces that's what they're there for yeah okay thank you david anything specific um sounds good i think he's done a wonderful job looking everything up and figuring everything out like, hats off to him okay um Mr. Town Administrator, do you need, is a general nodding of heads okay with you with regards to the band and that insurance? Oh, I think it's probably more appropriate to make a motion to allow the use of the parking lot for the band and other festivities on the condition that the tulip be purchased. And a copy be? Yeah, we'll get one automatically Great. when they put in the secret code. Uh, so moved. Second. <laughs> uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank um, you very much. Thank now, you. before you run away, I do have a couple of other um, points to bring up, um, both with the board and with yourself. You said that you plan on cleaning the bonfire up the next day. Yes. Will you have other volunteers to do a general sweep of the yes. entire beach area for trash? We have we have a beach combing brigade put together. Basically, it's going to be my wife and friends. 
okay. and, and myself and my son. And my son has a gooseneck dump trailer. And so basically the plan was to back it back over the curb work where the, when they bring, like they do when they bring the trees in for the fire. And we're just gonna back up to the site and use it as a large dustpan and just everything in. And then that way we can screen off the sand get it back on the beach and take all the burnt refuse away and leave it like it never happened. And that way we can police trash, bag it, haul it. Great. Yeah, we'll make a quick sweep of the beach. The beach ain't that big. No. Just, you know, we'll get, we'll, we'll have we'll have at least a half a dozen people down there just do a sweep of the beach, get the garbage up, get it out. Anything that's left behind will be hauled. We'll take and make sure that the beach looks like it was before we got there. Do you think, or does the board think that we need to have extra receptacles down there or that, you know, I'm just wondering yeah. if. I have some barrels, I have some white um, dairy barrels um, that I could bring down and put drum liners in that we could have for extra. Um, so that would be more easy places to throw things away because the town's trash cans are good and they have some really nice covered wooden covered ones, but. I could I could easily I could easily put together another four or five cans that that I could put out and just mark them for trash. Okay. Um, just you know because it's just it, it would be no big deal. I have a dumpster at the house. I can make stuff go away. It's not a problem. Okay. Um, and then uh, the other necessity of life are porta potties down yes. there. Um, do you think that we need to have additional? I want you to know I had a conversation with Mr. Pike. David had told me that he'll be in that morning to, f to freshen facilities, of course. And uh, the problem he's having is that he got hit with a 16 porta potty order for Thomaston. Ah. And so he told me that if he can pull extra units from job sites just for the holiday, he's going to do it. He was going to comp them to me and take them down. He was going to put one over by the pier and possibly another one over by the boat ramp. So that um, in intermediate areas where there's a bit of a walk, where there isn't service, where there isn't facilities during after hours, there's place for people. That's what I was thinking because there's so many people that hang out on the ferry pier and on the public pier, okay. and on the other side of the lobster shack. And we wanted to kind of close the distance and have at least two porta pots there so that uh, we could handle the increased need. Okay, great, yeah. excellent. Yeah, I'll just it really is uncomfortable being a big bunch of people. You got to go to the bathroom and you can't. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's, that's not a good place to be. Yep. Uh, those are all the questions I had. Do you have? I'm, I'm still talking with another company. David gave me the name of another company that has porta potties, but it's just, it's tough this time of year to, to get any extras. But David has assured me if I can have some, he's going to provide two to me. Um, he's in the process of pulling other units. And when I was talking to him, he was cleaning a toilet. So. It was a it was a fast conversation, but uh, I trust that he will do right by us if he can. Okay. Uh, anything I'm forgetting, David? Um, no. Seems Let's all keep our fingers crossed. It looks like it's going to be partly cloudy, and then beautiful quarter moon and stars with light, maybe eleven knot wind. It's Perfect. Absolutely fabulous. <laughs> we're going to we're going to we're going to shoot fireworks for you, the likes of which you haven't seen in a while. This is going to be fantastic. And so it shall be, hopefully. It will. It will. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. So much. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so with all of this excitement, uh, I understand we had a question regarding em Emily's here. Yes. Come on down. You're the next contestant on the select board. Is sometimes right. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm Emily Flaherty, 492 Hope Road, right across the street. We, uh, the Girl Scout Troop 2252 of Lincolnville, had is working very hard on fundraising for a big educational trip next year. The girls are in just got out of fifth grade and have been saving since kindergarten to go to space camp in Alabama. So we are working very hard to find as many fundraising opportunities as we can because taking a lot of nine girls to Alabama is a rather, it costs some money <laughs> and they're still working on raising the funds for that. What we were wondering is since there is going to be a large group of people enjoying the festivities on Lincolnville Beach that night, if it would be possible to set up a table against the back of the sand, either near the grass bank or the retaining walls, and allow the 
kids, the girls, to sell lemonade as a fundraiser towards this trip. I would be looking at the time frame would be six to nine because we want to stop prior to the fireworks. Okay. Um, I guess my immediate question that comes up that I'm going to turn to our town administrator uh, is the provision contained within the deed with regards to that public area preventing this sort of thing. I guess it depends on how you read it. If it's a, it talks about commercial activities and making no money or profit. I don't even know if it says profit. We take money from uh, revenue derived from revenue these. derived. Thank you. I think. Um, I don't know if a fundraiser for the Girl Scouts is a commercial activity. Certainly going to derive revenue, but if I'm not sure as that was anticipated when it was acquired in 1940-something, too. If you put the sign up saying that they're not selling the lemonade and asking for a donation towards it, and a suggested donation being whatever the price is, you may end up having to give away a couple, but they're not selling it, they're asking for a donation. Yeah, we might be, you might be able to find a location that's not on that property, too, that would be suitable for their intended purposes, too. Mm. Thoughts? They get out, out on the, you know, out by, hate to put them away from the crowd, but maybe out by the Christmas tree where you're in the States, right away of the road. Mm -hmm. Meets the letter in the jet. Yeah. I see what Josh is going to. My, my opinion is, um, I, I personally am comfortable risking potentially violating this deed so the Girl Scout troop can fundraise. I, I, I just, I don't think of it as a commercial activity. I think it would be hard for someone to read it that way when it's fundraising for a trip to Alabama. I agree with you that 100%, but I don't know what a, law, a lawyer would have in setting a precedent for the use of the property. That's where, that's the issue I, where it's a donation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, I, I mean I, I'm all in favor of doing it, believe me, but <clears throat> once you say that, okay, these guys can do it because they're not doing it for this, well, you have taken money in, re in return for an item that you're handing out that sales any way you, you're doing it. Maybe in the fact <coughs> that in the, you make a one-time approval recognizing that we don't have a policy developed that we've discussed creating one, no. and in the absence of that, you make a one-time exception and you just let the world know that this is a one-time exception until such time as rules and regs are adopted. I'm very comfortable with that. Yeah. Yeah. One time. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, I guess I would feel like we could go ahead and make a motion to um, authorize a one-time and specific use of a location to be agreed upon with the town administrator for Troop 2252 of Lincolnville to fundraise by selling beverages. So seconded, any further discussion? All those in favor? Great, and hot on the heels of that. So work with David, you will find a location where Works for on our behalf we will feel we'll be safe and within the constraints that we're bound to. <laughs> so yeah, thank Perfect. you. That's great, thank you. Great, thank you um, very much. Good appreciate luck. it. And I think that I would like to get a general nodding of heads from the board to uh, put on our upcoming agendas to look at drafting a policy regarding use of this space because yeah. with the success and the smooth sailing that it's all going to have with this event, Inevitably, this conversation is going to happen again and again and again and again, and we have to have parameters by which we can properly vet applications.
locations for use of the space. Yeah, Definitely. lots of nodding ahead. Yep. Good, great, awesome, fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> um, yeah, and I suppose as part of that conversation, creating some sort of a deadline for that kind of thing also would be great. Yeah. Okay, moving rapidly along to not even halfway through our agenda. Um, <laughs> continuation of harbor improvement discussions. Uh, we have input from the harbor committee. I did uh, get a message from the chair of the harbor committee that he was regretful that he was not able to attend tonight's meeting. But we have his communication and I did actually attend that harbor committee meeting because I wanted to take it all in firsthand and David was also there. So I feel like between the two of us we should do a reasonably decent job of answering any questions. Do you have any questions? Um, let's let's talk about the boat ramp first. Okay. My most pressing question is regarding the uh, the um, precast concrete planks. Yeah. Um, so, how much trouble have other communities really been having? With these? Extensive. What what kind of trouble? Is that? Well, because they're sort of like. Lincoln logs or, or Legos and they're often bolted together but because they're often set in a variety of riprap and gravel even in a quiet area waves can get under them and lift and shift and tilt and also depending on time of year freezing thawing that kind of they move a lot and have to be reset um, and the conversation that the committee had very much centered around, you know, we've had a paved boat ramp for, you know, ever. I mean, repaved 15 years ago ish. You know, and it's been fine. Um, <coughs> so the thought was that, and there was a lot of conversation from everyone present that their experience with all of the boat ramps that use these cast concrete planks that they move and wiggle and just are maintenance intensive. So. I think what you're gonna find though is if you build a new ramp, you're gonna have end up with some sort of concrete plank there um, because that's all they're gonna, per their environmental perimeters will allow. allow. Because yeah. pavement is an asphalt product, and you don't then they don't want to introduce oils and asphalts into water. Yeah. And but a lot of communities do pavement to whatever allowable point, right. and then yeah, cast concrete, which often is below the a lot of the wave action. Yeah, okay. and I and I think that's what um, you know what Steve had laid, <coughs> laid out. Was paving out to try to find it. Yeah, X number of feet. Yeah, wherever, wherever it is, and then okay. and, then make, the and then make and then make the conversion. Um, Does Rockport have those precasts? Down below, at a certain point. Okay. Yeah, well, it's it's pavement. I I couldn't tell you how far, but okay. but then eventually. So a lot of their conversation centered around, um, you know, while they said, yeah, concept A seemed great, the general sentiment was, you know, if we're gonna do it, why don't we go for it? And, you know, there was a conversation of, well, we don't have rights or use or ownership over the sewer treatment facility yet. Yeah. And the general sentiment was, well, even if we don't have that, why don't we 
get the pieces in place to get there with the hopes that we'll all come to that agreement in the future, which I have to say I don't disagree with. That sounds great. Plan, plan for that eventuality, and if it doesn't end up happening, we scale back. Yeah. Your thoughts? I had originally felt that doing a third or even a half of the decking was ridiculous. I thought probably if we were going to do it, we'd do it all at once, get it over, get it over with. But now that I read some of the some of the information here, some of the information that came with the to me that replacing the red and the yellow marked areas might be the way to go with an indication that it's more important to change the activity on the, on the pier. Let's get there, but let's finish the oh, oh, conversation sorry. first. Sorry. Right. <laughs> let's do, I can't, I can't, I'm you're going to scramble my brain. I'm scrambling myself. <laughs> brown tail bomb.
believe I'm about to say this. I mean, really, for a project of this potential magnitude, we need to start planning next year's budget request yep. now. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. And yep. that's kind of the goal we're looking at is how much money we're going to need for all the testing for dredging, how much yep. money we're going to need to yep. construct this, how much money we're going to need to yep. acquire land, yep. permitting costs. But how great to actually have you know tangible, pro you know, rather mm -hmm. than setting aside an arbitrary amount of money every single year for something, you know, I mean, yep. it it feels good to be at a place where we're like really looking at addressing Absolutely. some of the issues that are, that facility has. And I mean, the, the big benefit to this is parking is a huge issue. So mm -hmm. if we can improve on the parking situation, fantastic. And having a boat ramp that we're gonna have to attend to in the next couple of years anyway, and making that more accessible during more of the time is mm. a win-win. Yeah, I think it's worth having a longer timeline to get it right. Yeah, yeah. Um, so do you need anything else from the board right now, David, on that particular subject? Nope, I don't think so. Okay. So. Not on that one. Getting to the peer decking, there was a lot of conversation about the percentage <laughs> and the amount and how and what direction the planks will go and whether we pave it or we don't pave it or we what have you, which is interesting because that's not <laughs> what we asked the Harbor Committee to look at. We just wanted them to address timing, but their input is interesting and valuable regardless. So, Kern, would you care to pick up where you left off? Yeah. Um, I just, I had originally felt <coughs> that if we're going to, that it made no sense just to replace bits and pieces here and there. Mm -hmm. But now, reading what the, um, what the Harbor Committee, some of what the Harbor Committee mm -hmm. said there about this, and then re uh, revisited the um, diagram that we got the last time that we got that survey. Yeah. Um, it makes sense to me that maybe it would be financially beneficial to us to uh, explore replacing the red and yellow marked areas. Yeah. And then look at how we're using it. Uh huh. That because there's information there, you're right. If the ramp, the ramp should be worn the same, if not more, mm -hmm. if if the abuse is from <coughs> or if the damage is from plows right. or things of that nature. But it doesn't seem to be. It seems to be in the area where a vehicle, a truck, be it a car or whatever it is. Is backing and filling, stopping and going. Um, and how do other areas, how do other towns um, have people enter and exit their pier? Um, does Salisbury even back onto their pier? Do they drive onto their pier? Well, it's only it's narrow, so they they can only pull on or back up, and there's also yeah. no. There's no additional storage out on one, that. One way. Yeah. So that's I do realize that uh, there are some um, <coughs> people traveling across that are traveling across on on a, a, a marine shuttle, mm -hmm. and they do drive a personal vehicle right down there to let people exit the vehicle and then get right onto the boat for obvious reasons. Yep. And I'm not sure that a person 
could get totally lost in this conversation, but there are, you know, if by shifting our the way that we look at the harbor and if we improve some of the aspects of its functionality, suddenly we have the opportunity to relieve some of the pressure <coughs> that is currently on that one facility trying to be all things to all people. So, you know, it's a little ways down the line, but it's worthwhile thinking. And I know that there are a lot of communities that have, you know, pilings, floats down the ramp, such that, you know, you can drive in, unload all of your traps, drive out, you know, so there's not as much of the, sure. you know, up and down the ramp and the hoist and all that kind of stuff, so. When you say it that way, it sounds elegant compared to what we have now, which is this extremely expensive structure with lots of ramps and pulleys and yeah, well, I think and moving was, parts. And yeah. yeah, there's yeah. also a comment there that it's the traffic, whether it be foot traffic or just usage, has increased tenfold. Yeah, and, and, and you know, yeah. yeah. I'm curious. So the harbor committee just it threw out there the idea of replacing the structurally compromised boards and then paving over the structure and I think the thought and correct me if I'm wrong David was that not necessarily knowing the length of the remaining parts of the pier structure why go to town replacing a lot of that top decking knowing that we're probably going to have to get into some of the underpinnings and is making it structurally sound and then leveling it with pavement a worthwhile conversation and I guess that gets to your point is what are our goals is our is our goal to create a perfectly smooth service and if it's not if it's to have it to be structurally sound and functional then i think you know replacing the 28 per I mean, we, we have 72 percent of the pier deck that is perfectly good and when you put it that way it seems ridiculous to talk about investing the time and money and inconvenience of having that structure out of order i'm all about replacing red and yellow and continuing this conversation at a future meeting about the use. And I think, I, I appreciate their ideas for other ways of addressing the talk, but I don't think they make any sense right now. Okay. Is that your, your general sentiment, Kern? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I would yeah. agree with replacing the yellow. Yep. Um, paving sounds interesting. Yep. Um, I don't know if you, I mean, if the government and everybody else would let you pave over the ocean. Yeah. I don't know if that would be, and whether it would stand up to the movement. Yeah. I mean, there's constant movement on those decks. Is it going to break up? Or is that Freezing, will it, thawing. Will yeah. It, will, will it do? Will we wasting the pavement? Pavement isn't inexpensive. Are we wasting a fair amount of money dropping into the ocean? And then have the Fed come along and send us a little bill for pollutant. Mm -hmm. Um. <coughs> I don't, it, you know, I, I, I would want to see where else it's played over wood and worked before I could go along with it. Yep. Yep. Right, yeah. Yep. Um, so it seems that on a future agenda we should talk about policies regarding use of the pier structure. Vehicle traffic, yeah. And our future, with yeah. uh, our future relationship with that infrastructure. Yep. yep. Do you have one any thing, other? <clears throat> one thing I wonder if it would be, and it may not be, if it would be worthwhile while you're um, replacing the one third is it or whatever roughly the decking there that's got to go with the red and the yellow, if you'd be better off to refasten a good percentage of the other stuff while you're right there. Pull, I, pull, pull, pull yeah. the fasteners and screw them down. Yeah. You know, I mean, and I'm just, just, I'm just throwing that out there. I don't, you know, as a person, you know, you've got a crew sitting there.
with equipment to work with, is it cheaper to fix it now even though it doesn't quite need it yet, mm -hmm. than to three years down the road come mm -hmm. back and do a second yellow or red set, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And not that that's going to change the wear factor any, but some of it is loose and... Yep. Well, and that certainly would dictate what we're asking of contractors, what fasteners we or, wish to use, and then definitely, you know... Yeah, if we, if we have screws, maybe un unsecured maybe. planks that are of sufficient strength and yeah. thickness, we definitely need to secure them down. Yeah. No doubt, no doubt about it. Well, is nailed right now? Spike. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which you know they get metal fatigue and so that definitely would be worth including in whatever requests we yep. get for quotes. Um, does it go without saying, David, or do you need a general consensus regarding curbing that's been called out as No, I think I can put together the package, and we're okay. looking at, I mean, the Harbor Committee had recommended a, what, March, April time, or April, May time yeah. frame, so we still can have some conversations if, yep. as necessary, but yep. that would be the goal, is to get it out get pricing back so we can give the go-ahead to somebody and yep. get, a, get somebody lined up and prove yep. this is what happened. Yep. Um, do you need anything else from us right now at this time, David? Not on that, unless you've got something you want to volunteer. Anything else? Okay, fantastic. Um, we have several applications uh, for events up at the cellar door winery all by Trillium Catering. Um, were they invited to come or no? I did not extend okay. the invitation. Okay. I mean, they were welcome, obviously. But. Sure, sure, sure. I move that the board approve and sign the applications for catering permits as submitted by Trillium Events for functions at the cellar door winery on July 27th. August 1st and August 15th, 2019. Nice second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing nothing, all those in favor? No, just observations. Thanks for naming. Thank you. Yeah, do you wish to address the board on that? I just wondered if, if there was discussion about it, but it's been going on for a while, so I can see where. Yep. Well, and I definitely encourage if you have specific problems or complaints to yes, yes. It is always we always want to know if there is an issue that's within the our purview, and it may not be. It may be something that either the event coordinator needs to address, or or a series of you know. The other key, just for your benefit, is usually sometime after the first of the year, the board gets an application from, in this case, the Solidor Winery for what's called a special amusement permit or license, yeah. where they list out all their events for the year and they we advertise that. And that's certainly a good time to participate <coughs> in the process, not that you couldn't talk tonight, Sure. But this part of the specific. part of this these events have already been permitted. This is somebody that's coming to work for them right. that needs an additional approval. Yeah. So to speak. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and at this point we have uh, Did you vote on that? One I wasn't paying attention. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thanks. I know we get on a roll. <laughs> 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 um, we have the opportunity now to adopt, renew, amend, or rescind uh, certain board policies. Um, first is uh, rules of procedure. Any um, one care to make a motion on that? I move that the excuse me. I move that the board of selectmen utilize the current. Rules of Procedure, the Lincolnville Board of Selectmen for the coming fiscal year. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion? That's that's what's back here? Yep. Yep. Back here. yep. Okay. Any more discussion? Seeing nothing, all those in favor? Thank you very much. And we have the policy on treasure
manager's disbursement warrants for employee wages and benefits. I don't know. <laughs> All together. Don't fight me. One, two, and <laughs> I move that the Board of Selectmen approve the policy on Treasurer's disbursement warrants for employees' wages and benefits dated June 24, 2019. So Second. moved. Second. Seconded. Uh, any discussion? Seeing nothing, all those in favor? Thank you very much. We have the policy on Treasurer's disbursement warrant of state fees and revenues. Move that the board approve the policy on treasurer's disbursement warrants for sending revenue collected on behalf of the state to the appropriate state agency dated June 24, 2019. So moved. Second. Seconded. Any further discussion? Seeing nothing, all those in favor? Thank you very much. And we have policy on treasurer's disbursement warrant for municipal education costs. I move that the board approve the policy uh, on treasurer, treasurer's disbursement warrants for municipal education costs dated June 24th, 2019. And a second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing nothing, all those in favor? Thank you very much. And moving along, uh, it is that time of year where we formally engage with our auditor. I move that the board authorized lately done as chair of the board to sign the engagement letter with William H. Brewer to conduct the annual audit. No second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Seeing nothing, all those in favor? Thank you very much. And it is also time to <laughs> re-engage with our assessor's agent for fiscal year 2020. I move that the board approve and sign the contract for assessing services with Fort Halifax appraisals for fiscal year 2020. So moved. Second. Seconded. Any discussion? Seeing nothing, all those in favor? Thank you very much. <clears throat> and in order to address our next agenda item, we I need a motion to suspend ourselves as Board of Selectmen. I move that we suspend our meeting as a Board of Selectmen and convene as a Board of Assessors. Sorry, <laughs> Colonel. <laughs> so moved. Second. Seconded. All those in favor? Thank you. And now that we have convened as <coughs> Assessors, uh, does any have any questions on this particular topic? Okay, can we have a motion then? I move that the board approve and sign abatement number 2018-06 in the amount of $719.94 plus any interest for James Rutland. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing nothing, all those in favor? Thank you very much. Now that we have dispatched with agenda item number 13, uh, I need a motion to reconvene as the Board of Selectmen. I move that we adjourn our meeting as the Board of Assessors and reconvene as the Board of Selectmen. No second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing nothing, all those in favor? Thank you very much. And David, would you like to talk now that we have an update on our emergency medical services agreement with Northeast Mobile Health Service TikTok? Yeah, so we have an update to the update to the update. It's been updated since you got <coughs> since you got your package with the typo this afternoon. Um, there's the four towns individually are working through their contract approval process um, thus far yeah, the agreements um, um, are mirror one another uh, with the exception of dollars um, we've been offered um, by Northeast the option to go with a two-year contract all four towns not just Lincolnville all four towns <coughs> have been given the option of a one-year 
agreement or two. Um, I got the wording on the two-year agreement today, which is essentially the same as this one year, with the exception there's another paragraph inserted about what the cost will be in the second year, um, where it will go up by the, um, the factor of inflation is set forth by the Bureau of Labor for the New England region, all items. Um, at this point, um, I haven't, um, n none of the towns have committed or signed. Um, Northeast intends to continue to offer the service as of July 1, um, in anticipation of all the towns signing on the dotted line. This latest addendum um, is um, it was primarily, I guess, drafted by the Camden's town attorney, and then Northeast has stuck in um, some what I would call minor housekeeping things that have irked them. Um, so I guess at this point, my <laughs> suggestion. Uh, based on the board's conversations um, when they met with the HOPE board is that we allow the others to proceed and sign and that we uh, proceed with looking at the possibility of a two-year contract and presenting that to the town meeting because you can't approve that yourselves. Um, and in hopes at that point others will have decided what they're doing and the language will be finally, finally hammered out. If Northeast was not going to be willing to continue the service as of July 1, I'd say sign it today. Yeah. But. Have they given us 30 days? They have not. It, okay. Um, and they have to not only give us 30 days notice, they have to notify the public. Right following uh, procedures set forth in the rules and regulations for EMS. So okay. they don't have any intention of, they haven't indicated any intention to do that. Um, I mean, they're not waiting forever. I have let them know that we received this, that based on the discussions you had over in Hope mm -hmm. from a couple weeks ago, that uh, the indications were that you'd likely be looking at a two-year agreement. Um, you have and the next item is uh, uh, the possibility of having a special town meeting um, to give you the authority to negotiate and sign <coughs> the agreement. So nobody said that the agreement is perfect as yet. None of the other com partnering communities have said that. So I'm hoping that they kind of get to their comfort level and sign it. So, um, I just have a few questions. So, yeah. did they say what the if the if, if the subsidy would be the same yeah. for this upcoming year? At yeah, this the year that we're coming into, starting July one through June thirty, it will be what we what we budgeted, uh, which is the same amount we paid this past year, and then year two would be increased. Um, I did, I don't know if I brought it in, I did print off um, the current inflation rate year to year was like 1.5% on that, on the indices that they're looking at. You can find many different um, consumer price indexes out there about what they would looked at. If you went back from May of 19 to May of 18 to change 1.5%. So, you know, you we're going to be looking at an increase. I don't know what level it will be. Who knows what inflation is going to do in the next year. They, the agreement also, the current draft of the agreement says something like if it goes down, they're not going down. So if it was negative inflation and it went down 1%, we're not going to get right, a ring And off. then, um, so is, is a current, is the thinking we'll, we'll wait until, until the other towns hammer out the final language and then we'll have our town attorney look at it beforehand um, or I we certainly could I believe that at least one if not two or three of the other towns are 
having their attorneys look at it, and I think we benefit from having that done. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, I don't suspect that there's um, anything in here that is egregious in term to us in terms of it's basically taking the the agreement we have and extending it and dropping some provisions and adding some minor language, but we certainly can have it reviewed if we want it. I feel fine if cost you know if they want if they're gonna pay for it and we'll look over it and I think that'll be just fine. Um, so response level. I just kinda of, this first time I've read this in its entirety. Yep. Um, mutual aid agreements. Mm -hmm. uh, it says that uh, Northeast can, it says, uh, as per section eight, Northeast shall have mutual aid agreements in place, so that's agreements. So that means they have an agreement with more than one other facility mm -hmm. uh, yeah. in case they cannot handle a call. In the event that they cannot immediately respond to any call for emergency service, have to be en route within two, two minutes. So that was on page four. So if you go to page five, average response time performance requirements. Response time is defined as the total time from when the call is acknowledged by Northeast to the time Northeast Ambulance arrives at the incident. Average response times for the town of Lincolnville will be 19 minutes. I go back to mutual aid agreements. If the selection is going to be Rockland as a mutual aid backup, there is no way possible that Rockland is going to get to Lincolnville in 19, in 19 minutes, and that's already happened. My question is, is there another mutual aid agreement with someone and they weren't available? Is that why Rockland is chosen, or is Rockland the only mutual aid agreement? Anything over 25 minutes, I'm going to say, is probably not, that's not cool. Yeah. Uh, first, to back up, it's the average response time is Understood. It says so, that. Yeah. So if, I mean, it obviously it benefits Northeast to take the call because the, 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 the outfit that takes the call is the one that gets the bill the patient for the transportation of the call. Um, Northeast, I believe, uses primarily Rockland for mutual aid backup on their calls if they are unable to respond for whatever reason. Uh, we, the town of Lincolnville, and has Northeast signed, we have a, a Waldo County mutual aid pact that may not be the proper word, um, that Northeast is part of regarding mutual aid to and from other communities in Waldo County. Um, that was prepared, it's a pretty standard procedure to do that because nobody is going to be a staff for every eventuality and that's the, that's the issue. I think the primary focus or the primary use um, of Rockland has been because the bulk of the calls where they've needed mutual aid has been south of us in Camden and Rockport, and the response has been more prompt. The other part of that is we contract with Northeast for certain calls to be covered by paramedics, and the more likely paramedic you're gonna get is coming from the south. Uh, one could average, not one could, one could average, one could argue that average response time, even if it was 25 minutes, is kind of skewed. Uh, especially if they're going to consistently use Rockland as a backup. If they're going to say that 
no service in the state of Maine that covers every call. Just then so you how know. How can they put that in here and use it as a measurable um, device? Well, wasn't that requested by? Well, this was a year ago when we draft when that agreement yeah. was drafted. Yeah. Um, we had to pick some measure. Understood. And, and but, but if you want a year later, you've got some data. That oh, sure. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if you want to ask for a lower response time, it's certainly fair game. That isn't what I what I would look for. I'm looking to to I'm looking to be able to achieve what they say they can do. Mm -hmm. And if Rockland is going to be their go-to mm -hmm. uh, mutual aid, then there's no way that what they say they can do. I, it would be a stretch for me to come from where they are and make it in 19 minutes consistently. Well, what was the average response time for last year? Yeah, I got to assume that. I mean, they never violated 19. To Lincolnville, you mean? To Lincolnville. Yeah. yeah. It's been. It was. It's been consistently less than 19 minutes. Okay. I mean, okay. of course, you average in all the mutual aid and and, and yeah. I mean, yeah, it's under 19. Sure, but I believe I, mean, I believe in the last year we've had one mutual aid call that Northeast didn't cover in Lincolnville recently within the last year. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you get the. I, I don't know. There isn't. I know there isn't one in this packet. But I mean, you get the reports, get the reports and we've got. Yeah. A file full of, full of data, and you can look at each call and see when the trucks rolled and when they arrived. I guess, I guess, what I, I would just like to know who they've got for mutual aid partners, yeah. and how the selection process goes when when they're not available to take the call. Would that well to dispatch? Yeah, I mean, you've got to remember for our fire and our ambulance service goes to Knox yep. it ends up at Knox Regional Dispatch Which is and when Knox tones out whatever the proper buzzword is for Northeast and Northeast is unavailable to cover that call they would tell the Knox dispatcher we're not available call mutual aid and the, probably the standard protocol at Knox is to Dispatch wrong. Well, I would love to know, and maybe because it's a whole other county, it's just not possible. Or Belfast is not interested, but obviously Belfast would make the most sense for mutual aid. It's much closer, but again, I don't know if that's possible. Well, or I, I feel like that's a bigger conversation yeah, I, 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 of, of us being in a completely separate county than our partners. Yeah, yeah. And that delay, because there is a delay. Calling Waldo, Waldo referring to Knox, and then where's confusion? The pieces falling into place. I mean, I think they've got you know a protocol for doing it, but they're still. But I mean, but we, it really we, it, it, it's a conversation I, outside of yeah, what and, we're. And I am not looking to rewrite everything. Here, yeah, really. But it's just a question that I had because well, we could we could explore. I mean, the, this is the first exploration in terms of having a different mutual aid uh, provider we could explore with Northeast and with Knox Regional I mean not the dispatch centers got you know their standard protocols but they could be different for Lincolnville than they are for Rockport easy enough you know nope we're not you know primary is not available we're calling backup it's not not unlike the fire I mean there are certain fire departments that automatically get a mutual aid call that go to you know these towns around it and the next town over has a different set of mutual aid calls so it's certainly something we could explore with Northeast and Knox region about changing who the primary backup is yeah okay now's the time for sure yeah that no, sounds great um if there's nothing else specific to the update that we've received thus far, shall we segue into having a conversation about putting on the schedule a uh, special town meeting warrant that will position us to be able to um, negotiate a contract? And I don't know if maybe for the benefit
benefit of the people at home. David, do you want to just give a brief sure. synopsis of what we're talking about? Uh, for the last six years, the town of Lincolnville has had a contract with Northeast Mobile Health Service to provide EMS services to the town of Lincolnville for the residents and visitors of Lincolnville. And last year, we switched to a performance-based contract where we didn't tell Northeast um, how many trucks or rigs or whatever they needed to have. We said, you need to provide, one was response times, an average response of this many minutes or lower. And on these types of calls, you need to send a paramedic and on these types of calls, you can send a lower license level advanced or whatever. And if you don't do that on a certain number of calls, there are stiff financial penalties involved. Um, Northeast was willing to do that for a year because they didn't know, to be quite honest, if they were going to meet those performance measures and what the fines and implications would be. Here we are a year later. Um, they've been able to meet the performance measures in all four communities individually and as a whole. Um, they are willing uh, to extend us either on a one-year contract basis at the same cost or on a two-year basis where year one it will be at the same cost and year two will be at year one plus some percentage. I think everybody on the board knows this. The board can't enter into a multi-year contract without the voters saying it's okay. Um, the proposal is to have a special town meeting that would authorize the board to uh, negotiate an agreement not to exceed two years in duration uh, to provide EMS and transport services, basically on, not basically, on terms and conditions that you thought was appropriate. In other words, we didn't have a contract in hand that we could hand to people and say, here, you know, read it and whatever. Um, sometimes they have to put their faith and trust in you that you can read and act in their best interest. <coughs> so all that being said, uh, does the board wish to make a motion to approve a town special town meeting warrant for our next meeting? I move that the board approve and sign the special town meeting warrant for 6 p.m. July 8, 2019 at the Lincolnville Central School. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing nothing, all those in favor? Thank you very much. And we have the treasurer's in payroll warrants to approve and sign. I move that the board approve the treasurer's in payroll warrants. So moved. Seconded. Uh, any discussion? Seeing nothing, all those in favor? Thank you very much. And am I to understand that I need to recuse myself from this conversation? Yes. Okay. If you would. Yep. Happy to. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to our vice chair. And I'm going to scribble on the treasurer's and payroll warrants. And there's two of each in each one, gentlemen. So don't forget to sign them. I won't let them. <laughs> and I will. Do you want me to wait to adjourn the meeting? Or what, or no, I think Vice Chair Lake can do that part. Can you, can you handle it? <laughs> Can I, uh, you want me to sign things? Yeah, maybe yep. I can kick you out and go sign things. Yep. All right. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Wait, I need a. I get out of school early. <laughs> I move that pursuant to Title One MRSA Section 4056C that the Board of Selectmen enter into executive session to discuss the possible disposition of real property or premature disclosure of the information would prejudice the competitive bargaining position of the town. So moved. So. Seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? I think it, who refuses to comply. <laughs> it 
might be benefit if anybody's still watching at home to know that you may likely come back into open session and actually make a vote besides just to adjourn. We may be back. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. <laughs> Take the money and run.